Hello everyone and welcome back to the part 2 of SignBit extension. In the previous session, we observed how the unsigned numbers and the numbers in signed magnitude forms are transferred from one smaller register to a larger register. In this session, we will see the remaining two, that is, the ones and twos complements. So, without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the outcome of today's session, today, we will first observe the extension of numbers in signed ones and twos complement form. Thereafter, we will observe an interesting example problem. Now, if you remember, in the session representation of binary numbers, we learned that among all the different representations, ones falls under the non weighted category. And why is so? Because for the positive counterparts, we get to use the weights. However, for the negative counterparts, the bits are achieved by toggling the bits of the positive counterparts. Also, if you observe closely, the patterns for the positive counterparts are same in all the different representations. And due to this reason, the positive numbers in one's complement form can be transferred from a smaller register to a larger one using the same rule that we used for the unsigned numbers. That is, we can just copy the contents at the least significant places and then clear the rest of the cells. Now, this will work because the positive counterparts in the ones complement form are weighted, just like the unsigned ones. But this method will not work when the negative numbers represented in one's complement form are concerned. Let me illustrate. Let's take a negative number from the negative counterpart, say, minus 5. Now, the pattern for minus 5 in one's complement form is 1010. Now, suppose in the smaller register, this value 1010 is stored. Now, we just saw that this is actually minus 5. Now, in case of one's complement form, the negative numbers are non weighted. But if we toggle the bits of the negative number, we will end up acquiring the positive counterparts, which are in turn weighted. So, let's start toggling. So, this 0 will become 1 now. 1 will become 0. Similarly, this 0 will become 1. And finally, this one will become 0. Now, if we consider the weights of the bit places, observe. The 1s are placed underneath 2 squared and 2 raised to the power 0, which will give us the value 5. Now, we can use the same rule like we used in case of the unsigned numbers. Because just now we have seen, for the positive counterparts, the patterns are same for every other representation. So, what we will do? We will copy the contents at the least significant places. And thereafter, we will clear the rest of the cells with zeros, right? Now, if we observe the place values concerning the 8-bit register, observe, the 1s are placed in the places 2 squared and 2 raised to the power 0. So, this is again plus 5. But we don't want this. We require the negative counter of this one and that 2 in 1's complement form. And how do we achieve the negative counterparts of any number in 1's complement form? Well, we will just toggle the bits, won't we? So, let's begin the toggling. Now, this register holds the value minus 5. Now, since the representation of minus 5 in one's complement is non weighted, and that is the reason why the place values are of no significance. Now, let's observe what we actually have done. So, what we did, we started off with this, which actually is minus 5. Then we toggled the bits and obtained this, which is positive 5. Then using the same rule as we used for unsigned numbers, we transferred the bits, least significant places. Then we cleared the rest of the cells. Now this transferred value is also positive 5. Now finally we toggle these bits, which gives us this pattern, which is minus 5. So this is the value that we started off with. And finally this one is the transferred data. Can you notice any patterns? So basically what we did, we started off with this value in this register and coming to the bigger register, that is the 8-bit register, we copied the elements of the 4-bit register at the least significant places and now this most significant bit of the smaller register is actually copied in all the most significant places in the bigger register. See, this and this are the same things. So, 
In one's complement form, we can transfer one number from a smaller register to a bigger register by copying the contents at the least significant places first and then copy the most significant bit of the smaller register to the rest of the cells in the bigger register. So this is how the data is transferred in case of signed numbers represented in one's complement form. Let's now observe how the sign bit extension is performed for the numbers in two's complement form. Now in case of this two's complement, we will not follow the basic strategy that we have been following so far. Instead, we will observe the two's complement representation in 4-bit, 5-bit and 6-bit register respectively and thus a pattern will become noticeable. Now if we talk about a 4-bit register, in order to store a two's complement number inside it, the place values would be something like this, that is 2 raised to the power 0, 2 raised to the power 1, 2 squared and minus 2 cubed, isn't it? Say we are storing the value 1, 0, 0, 1. Now this one will give us minus 8 and this one will give us 1. So minus 8 plus 1 will give us minus 7. In other words, if we store minus 7 in 2's complement form in a register, the storage will retain the values like 1, 0, 0, 1 in that particular 4-bit register. Now in case of a 5-bit register, the place values would be something like this. Basically, the most significant place will have the place value minus 2 raised to the power 4. Now suppose we are storing the value 11001 in this particular register. Let's observe what we will obtain. Now this one will give us minus 16 and from this one we will obtain 8. Now finally from this one we will obtain 1. Now minus 16 plus 8 will give us minus 8 and minus 8 plus 1 will give us minus 7. Basically, if we want to retain 7 in 2's complement form in a 5-bit register, the cells of the register will retain the values 1, 1, 0, 0, 1. Similarly, in case of a 6-bit register, the place values would be something like this. Basically, the most significant place will retain the place value minus 2 raised to the power 5, correct? Suppose we are storing the value 111001 in this particular 6-bit register. Let's observe what do we obtain. Now this one will give us the value minus 32 because minus 2 raised to the power 5 will be nothing but minus 32. Now this one will give us 16 because 2 raised to the power 4 is 16. Thereafter this one will give us 8 and finally this one is placed underneath 2 raised to the power 0. So basically we will obtain 1. Now observe, minus 32 plus 16 gives us minus 16 and minus 16 plus 8 will give us minus 8. So finally, minus 8 plus 1 will give us the value minus 7. So if minus 7 is stored in 2's complement form in a 6-bit register, the register will retain the value 111001, isn't it? Now using this analogy, we can provide a generalization. And what is that? If we consider an n bit number in 2's complement form, for that n bit number, the place values would be 2 raised to the power 0, so on, 2 raised to the power n minus 3, 2 raised to the power n minus 2, and the MSB will have the place value minus 2 raised to the power n minus 1. Say in this n bit number, we have stored the value 1, 1, 0, then a combination of 0 and 1, and finally a 1. Observe. This is the MSB and in the direction from MSB to LSB, this is the last one before we encountered any zeros. Now let's add the place values of these. So this one has the place value minus 2 raised to the power n minus 1 and this one has the place value 2 raised to the power n minus 2. Now this can also be rewritten as minus 2 raised to the power n by 2 plus 2 raised to the power n by 4 because 2 squared is 4, right? Now if from these we take 2 raised to the power n common, then we are left with minus half plus 1 by 4. Now minus half plus 1 by 4 will give us minus 1 by 4, which in turn will give us minus 2 raised to the power n minus 2. Observe. This is actually this bit places place value but with the negative sign in front. This basically means for any negative number stored in 2's complement form, the first sequence of 1's from the MSB towards the LSB, this particular sequence can be shortened down to the last one retaining the same value. And due to this property, the numbers stored in 2's complement form are transferred to the bigger register following the same rule that we used for 1's complement representation. That is, 
copy the contents at the least significant places. So these contents will first be copied to the least significant places and thereafter we will copy the MSB to the rest of the cells. That is this particular most significant bit will be copied to the all the MSB in the bigger register. So this is how sign bit extension is done for numbers in two's complement form. Let's now move on to the example problem. So consider this question, a two's complement number n, p3, p2, p1, p0 is transformed to p3, 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 p2, p1, p0 and that's followed by a 1. Which of the following is performed on n? So basically what they are asking is, this is n and it is a 2's complement number which has been transformed to this. Now while we transform this n to this, we may have performed any one of these options. So let's try to solve it. Now see, this is n. Now we are transforming this to this. Now n is actually a 2's complement number. That means in case of n, the most significant bit can be extended any number of times, which in this case has been done twice. Now not only we extended the MSB twice, we actually shifted this entire n towards the left and thereafter we made 1 follow this, didn't we? So this is also n, why? Because it's an 2's complement number. Now n has been shifted towards the left. Now if you remember, in the Session Conversion to Decimal Number System, we observed that in case of any binary number, if we shift them to the left of them, then we are actually multiplying that value with 2. So here also the same thing we have done, we have multiplied n with 2 and then the 1 is following this entire n, isn't it? So with this value, we will just add the value 1. So transforming n from this particular form to this form, we actually have performed n multiplied by 2 plus 1 or in other words, 2n plus 1. Therefore, from all these options, Option C, that is 2n plus 1, is the correct choice. So in this session, we first observed the extension of numbers in signed 1's and 2's complement form and thereafter we observed the interesting example problem. Alright people, that will be all for this session. I hope the concept of sign bit extension is clear to you now. In the next session, we will study about the overflow in binary numbers. So I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.